Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we're having an FIP digital event, creating development goal indicators, bridging data and outcomes. And I can't thank you enough for joining us. So welcome all of you that are looking and uh, joining us live today. There'll also be a number of you that will watch this later because it will be recorded and I wish to welcome them also. And I also wish to thank the various guests that we'll have and panelists today as we move forward. My name is Robert Sindelar, and by the role that I play as chair of the FIP Data and Intelligence Commission, I have the honor of serving as one of the co-moderators today. My other co-moderator moderator is Chris John, who is the FIP lead for evidence and impact digital event program for 2022. He's the FIP lead for data intelligence and serves as the FIP Data and Intelligence Commission secretary. We're just so pleased to have you here because FIP's vision is a world where everyone benefits from access to safe, effective, quality, and affordable medicines and health technologies. And FIP's mission is to support global health by enabling the advancement of pharmaceutical practice, sciences, and education. And this webinar fits nicely within that. And this is the fifth of six webinars on this topic that we're having around the various WHO health regions. The webinar will be recorded, as I mentioned, it will be streamed live via YouTube. The recording will be available on the FIP events website. You may ask questions at any time of any of the presenters or our panelists. There is a uh, question box that's provided at the bottom of the Zoom page. By all means, please just ask a question and we'll make sure that your question gets answered. We also ask you that if you wish to, please provide feedback on the quality of the webinar and the, how informative it was through the FIP webinars uh, uh, link that is or shown there for the uh, responses. Also, if you happen not to be a member of FIP, by all means, please consider joining. We think it'll be very beneficial for you. Next slide, please. As I said, uh, we'll do an introduction because we'll talk really about developing a needs-based data-driven culture. We'll also have uh, a discussion that will be presented by Dr. Lena Bader around the FIP development goals and regional and national priorities. We'll deal with the development and use of indicators to track progress with the FIP development goals uh, from our global pharmaceutical observatory team. And then we'll have a panel discussion with two experts from the region. And so we're looking forward to that. Chris will then do a summary and a close. Next slide, please. The learning objectives for the webinar today are to outline why a needs-based data-driven culture is so important. We'll try to identify approaches to measuring progress towards universal health coverage and health-related development goals. We'll describe FIP development goal priorities and how indicators were developed and we'll explain how monitoring and evaluation of development goals contributes to the evidence of outcomes and impact. Next slide, please. Chris? Thanks, Bob. Hi, everyone. Uh, we wouldn't be here today without the FIP development goals, which were launched by FIP in September 2020. And they're a key resource for transforming the pharmacy profession over the next de decade. And doing that globally, regionally, and nationally. They align with FIP's mission to support global health by enabling the advancement of pharmaceutical practice, science, and education, and are set to transform pharmacy in alignment with the wider global imperatives underpinning the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So these 21 development goals are all mapped and aligned to the health-related UN Sustainable Development Goals, which are, of course, um, a key goals for developing universal health coverage. So if in achieving these development goals, we are making progress towards universal health coverage. The series of events that we've been running uh, over this year, evidence and impact of which this is uh, a regional one for Eastern Mediterranean linked to FIP development goals 11 and 12. Now FIP development goal 11, is impact and outcomes. Each of the development goals splits into elements. There's a workforce and education element, a practice element, and a science element. So with this event uh, linking to development goal 11, impact and outcomes, you can see yeah, the workforce element of that is about evidence of the impact of the pharmaceutical workforce within health systems. 
The practice element is about evidence of the impact of pharmaceutical service in terms of health health camps. And the science element is about strategies and programs in place to enable timely access to safe, effective and affordable medical products. This event also links to Development Goal 12, Pharmacy Intelligence. Now, the workforce and education element of that is about having a national strategy and corresponding actions to collate and share workforce data and workforce planning activities. The practice element is about having a comprehensive national strategy to collate, share and utilize intelligence on service provision, development, delivery and needs to inform evidence-based pharmaceutical services. And the science element is about a data-driven decision-making strategy to accelerate pharmaceutical research, development, manufacturing, and market approval of medical products. The FIP Global Pharmaceutical Observatory is the engine room of global pharmaceutical data collection. And the FIP GPO will measure and monitor progress towards all the development goals. The FIP Global Pharmaceutical Observatory's mission centers around data, intelligence, advocacy and reporting. Uh, we know from the pandemic the importance of data and for data to provide us with evidence which demonstrates impact. So our first task is always to collate valid global data on workforce, education, practice and pharmaceutical science. And we must undertake comprehensive analyses of collated data to provide accessible, high quality intelligence and all this must be communicated innovatively to promote our member organization's impact on health. This communication will often be via the FIP Atlas, which is our visualization platform for displaying our data intelligence across the globe. And you may well have seen this on our GPO website, our microsite. And finally, we will provide evidence-based strategic information reports and guidance on the application of pharmaceutical science policies, practices, and services. Very briefly, the work of the FIP GPO, we have a multinational needs assessment program. You may have seen earlier in the year, we produced a report on the role of the pharmacist in booster vaccinations. That's a very good example of a multinational needs assessment project as part of that program. And we have very much tried a tried and tested needs-based approach to addressing data and developmental challenges through this program. I mentioned the Atlas, which is our online platform, our visualization platform for showcasing our members' needs and priorities. And this is supported by data collated by the GPO. And it allows FIP to identify opportunities for developing pharmacy with, for, and through our member organizations. We also have a GPO database that is the repository for FIP's pharmacy and pharmaceutical science data. And this contains data that will inform the indicators used to track progress against the FIP development goals, which you'll be hearing a lot more about very shortly. The FIP development goals provide a framework for needs assessment and prioritization for member organizations to undertake relevant to their national situation. In turn, the priorities can provide each organization with the foundations for mapping the progress and transformations needed for their workforce practice in pharmaceutical science. So indicators will be a way to monitor and measure progress and transformation for our member organizations, workforce practice and pharmaceutical science against the development goals. And as I've said, this will be via the data we collect via the GPO. Bob will be talking in a second about the Data Intelligence Commission, which provides strategic advice to FIP. And uh, finally, we have a series of data intelligence digital events program about evidence and impact of which today's event is uh, um, the end of this series. Uh, we have another regional event tomorrow from the Western Pacific. So I'll hand back to Bob. Thank you very much, Chris. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Data, Data Intelligence Commission. We have regular meetings throughout the year. Uh, the commission is made up of members of FIP that represent organizations and activity, specific activities within FIP, and we meet quite frequently. The commission provides strategic advice to FIP on the advocacy and delivery of the GPO program. And the commission recently made eight recommendations of steps to really try and develop a strong needs-based data-driven culture. The, if I may, I'd like to tell you about those eight uh, recommendations. We felt that FIP should develop common and accessible guidance and terminology 
uh, on data collection, processing, synthesis, and analysis. We believe that FIP should adopt and adapt for their pharmacy practice and pharmaceutical sciences, WHO's data principles. FIP should consider what it can offer to its member organizations as added value to the membership with respect to data and the GPO. We believe that FIP should serve as a global resource for collecting and disseminate, disseminating the best data practices and successes around the world. We believe that digital health, population health management, and data literacy learning outcomes should be incorporated into pharmacy initial education and training curricula, and also included in post-registration competency frameworks and continuing professional in improvement. FIP should continue to advocate for pharmacy to have full access and right ability to the patient's electronic health records. We believe that FIP uh, GPO should develop a clear and transparent governance process to enable data sharing between and among member organizations. And we recommend that each FIP structure, constituency, and forum should identify a data champion who can be supported by the GPO team. Chris? Thanks, Bob. And so to the FIP development goal indicators, I mentioned earlier the FIP development goals breaking down into elements of workforce practice and science. And then beneath that, we have mechanisms, which are tools and structures to facilitate and support the process of transformation. And then underpinning all of that is the indicators. And the indicators are key for measuring, measuring and monitoring the progress of the FIP development goals. Indicators will be used to support member organizations and nations to identify where improvements are needed, to set priorities for quality improvement and support, to create national dashboards displaying data against priority development goals. And I use the Atlas as an example of a, a dashboard that could be used to benchmark performance against international data and to support national quality improvement schemes and to demonstrate progress that pharmacy is making in support of health systems outcomes. Back to Bob. Thank you, Chris. I have the real pleasure of introducing our first speaker, but prior to doing that, I'd like to mention to our audience that all of our speakers and panelists have really uh, uh, excelled in, in their areas within pharmacy. And their bios would be so extensive that what we're gonna do is do a brief introduction, but if you were to look in the chat, their extensive bio is going to be included. So I hope you will look there. But well, it's a real pleasure to introduce today, Dr. Lena Bader, who's gonna be our first speaker. She is the FIP lead for equity, sustainability, policy and development. And she leads the FIP development goals, uh, uh, FIP DG's program work. She's also a UK trained pharmacist and a registered pharmacist. Dr. Bader, we're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Bob, for that kind introduction and, and Chris for setting the context for this. Uh, I'm going to be brief today, but really the role or purpose of my presentation is to <clears throat> showcase the regional and national priorities um, through the FIP development goals with a focus on the EMR or Eastern Mediterranean region. And I'd like to let you know how we did this and how can we use these data moving forward. So from the moment we launched the development goals in September 2020, we had made a commitment that we will support our members in uh, identifying their national priorities. This will also, uh, will of course, input into uh, understanding the regional um, roadmaps and give us an idea of global priorities as well. And that's exactly what we did following the launch uh, of the development goals. And the next slide um, reminds you of the global report that summarizes everything, including some of the data I'll be sharing today. So the FIP development goals report 2021, setting goals for the decade ahead. It was launched to provide a global status update on the goals uh, one year since their launch. Uh, and serves as an anchor point that will facilitate our next decade's uh, roadmap of action leading to 2030. So feel free to please um, read through this report to find out more about the other regions, which we presented in the previous episodes. Uh, and I'll ask my colleagues to uh, share the link in the chat so you can easily locate this. So the next slide just gives you a reminder uh, of 
well, the six regions of the world, uh, of course, that we um, look after through our members. Uh, and what we have done is uh, launched a new engagement strategy at FIP in 2021, which facilitated the collection of the data that contributed to um, this report. 2021 saw the beginning of this new engagement strategy, uh, strategy sorry. and you'll see that we started in April with some high-level meetings with members, followed by the first set of six regional engagement meetings. We continued in the summer uh, between July and September with a second set of regional engagement meetings. October, we held more uh, member interviews to to do an in-depth um, to gain an in-depth understanding of the priorities and needs that have already been reported throughout the year. Last but not least, in November, we carried out a third set of regional engagement strategies, uh, sorry, regional engagement meetings, and we continue um, delivering those to this day. All of these uh, engagement um, platforms, meetings, interviews, etc., we use to aggregate, collate data that we have uh, published in this report. And I'll give you uh, a snapshot of this data today. The next slide shows you a really colorful uh, chart that really is the global summary. And you'll see uh, at the bottom axis all the 21 goals, and against them is the number of countries that have reported these goals as a priority divided by region. And you see the color codes for the regions up on the screen. So of course, today we're focusing on the EMR and that's the pale green uh, one. And you'll see some of those priorities, of course, and unsurprisingly, there is a variation across the DGs in terms of which ones are priorities. You'll see the longest bars, such as goal seven, advancing integrated practice uh, services, uh, goal 13, policy development, goal 15, people-centered care. These have been reported more than others to be a common priority around the world and some less of a priority or identified by less countries than others. This is not surprising. The next slide uh, really represents the same data, but in a different way, maybe um, a little bit um, easier to digest. So we've divided these goals into priority levels, um, first, second, and third. This is not to undermine um, the importance of the ones in the third or second level priority. This is simply a way to demonstrate the results. So you'll see that the first level priority goals are the goals that have been reported to be the most common as a priority by the majority of countries. These include goal one, academic capacity, goal four, advanced and specialist development, goal seven, I've mentioned advancing integrated services, number 13 was one of the longer ones on the chart, policy development, of course, people-centered care, number 15, as well as patient safety, digital health, and sustainability in pharmacy. So this is the global snapshot. Now let's see how does that compare to the priorities of the Eastern Mediterranean region. So from this region, we've had five member organizations from five different countries in the region who reported on their priorities to us based on their, at the time, national development needs. So you'll see in this uh, similar pyramid to the other one, but this one focuses on this region in particular, again, another way to see what the first level priority goals, you'll see some overlap with the global goals, especially policy development and um, patient safety. So these were commonly reported as priorities. It is a priority for uh, around the world and it is they are priorities for the region as well. In addition, they've had additional uh, needs-based priorities, such as goal number two, which pertains to training strategies, goal five, competency development, and goal nine, continuing professional development. So you'll see these additional three goals that are um, that are distinctive to this region focus on workforce development. So from, from this, we understand that this is an important area for the Eastern Mediterranean region. And of course, the second and third level priority goals provide insight as well. The next slide, and it's really my final slide, but this shows the breakdown of the data. So as I've said, we had five members reporting from five countries. We've had Egypt, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Yemen. And you'll see how um, they've uh, identified uh, the priorities for each nation. There are some overlaps, of course, and those uh, resulted in the first level priority areas. And some have their distinctive uh, needs that may not be um, the biggest priority in other countries. I know we have some additional countries with us in the panel discussion, so we may hear from them about their own priorities. But really on this last note, I'd like to emphasize that FIP will continue 
to support all of our members to map their priorities and needs. We will engage with the members again and again because we understand priorities change and they um, uh, and, and we will be continuing to, to review them with them. And we will be also adding more uh, country data to each region to gain a better understanding. We will also share best practices on uh, transforming development goals from members to other members and continue to support and guide our members on how they can use and implement implement the development goals to transform pharmacy nationally. And on this, I'll pause. Thank you so much and look forward to any questions. Back to you, Chris. Thanks so much, Lena, for your insights and for drilling down from a global through to a region and a national perspective with development goal priorities. Now I'd like to introduce the double act we have for you today and members of the Global Pharmaceutical Observatory team I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Shirley Malianti, who's our FIP Data and Intelligence Specialist, and also Diala Kumani, who is our FIP UCL Collaborating Centre Researcher, who's been undertaking a great deal of research into the development goal indicators, and who is also a member of the Global Pharmaceutical Observatory team. So welcome both. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Good day, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to be here. So uh, just to set the scene a little bit, in the initial slide, Chris showed us a pyramid of FIP development goals. Um, we know that in the top layer of the pyramid, there is a mechanism where actually now uh, a growing set of global tools, structure and programs are already available to facilitate and support the process of transformation toward the FIP DGs. And now in the coming slide with my colleagues together with Diala, we will focus on the indicator, which is the bottom layer of the pyramid. So as what you have heard from Dr. Bader initially, during the past two years, we engaged with our members around the world and supported them in identifying and mapping their needs on a national and regional level, aligned with the FIP development goals. And using the DGs as a framework, we were able to answer the following question. What are the pharmaceutical development needs? to meet national and global healthcare requirements. And in Seville last month, we continued our discussion to member with member organizations where we encouraged them to share best practices and also experience through our platform. And now since the DGs has been used in its assessment, how can we now monitor our progress towards the development goals? And this is where the indicator is important. And uh, I will. I would like now to hand over actually to my colleague Diala, who will give you an overview about the development of the DG indicator. Diala, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Shirley, and thank you, Chris, for this introduction, and thank you all for joining us today at this event. Uh, I will start now by giving a brief overview of the project, highlighting the different data collection and data analysis methods used throughout the development process of the Global FIP Development Goals Indicators. As we can see here on the slide, the process involved conducting a series of qualitative research methods, including a desktop literature review, followed by a Delphi method. And this was stage one of the project. Later, a quantitative online questionnaire was also incorporated into the second stage, or we call it the global engagement stage. And I think many of our today's attendees are familiar with this questionnaire image presented here on the slide and answer this questionnaire. So I would like here uh, to thank you all for your valuable contribution. For the analysis, also qualitative and quantitative uh, analysis method were performed to analyze both stages to develop the final presented list of uh, global FIP development goal indicators, as we can see here on the slide as well. Moving on to the next slide, uh, I will go into more detail about the methodology and the data collection process. As I mentioned, uh, uh, a mixed method research design was used, qualitative and quantitative. The aim of stage one, the qualitative stage, was to identify the initial draft list of global FIP development goals indicators. Therefore, the development of progress indicators involved first, a content analysis of the relevant documents and the existing data collated from global published report and surveys by the WHO and the FIP. And this was followed by a Delphi method to identify and develop potential indicators aligned and mapped to the 21 development goals. 
The aim of the Delphi method was to reach an initial consensus on the proposed list of indicators assigned by an expert group. And this led to the development of 21 unvalidated proposed list of indicators covering different aspects of develop each development goals and ready to use in the uh, next stage. Subsequently, in stage two or the quantitative stage, uh, the aim of this stage was to construct the validity and the reliability of the proposed and validated development goals uh, produced from, from the previous stage in terms of the uh, indicators relevancy and availability or the accessibility from uh, a, uh, a global perspective. Uh, so the outcome of the Delphi method uh, were pre presented for wider engagement and used to conduct a global cross-section and online questionnaire uh, to assess and validate the relevancy and availability of the 21 proposed list of progress indicators. The 21 questionnaire links were disseminated, disseminated during a series of uh, FIB digital events held in 2021. One, e one event was held for each development goal, where the attendees of each digital event uh, who were international pharmacists working across different sectors and career stages uh, participated in this uh, global questionnaire. Also, a follow-up email or an invitation email was sent out to uh, global pharmacy leaders uh, who, who were representing their professional leadership, leadership association to participate in this short questionnaire throughout the FIP different sectors and consultants as well. Uh, the next slide shows the analysis and the main outcome of stage one. Uh, as I mentioned, a content analysis approach was undertaken to draft the primary pharmacy core indicators, and the output was the development of the Global uh, Pharmaceutical Development Goals uh, Core Indicators Handbook, comprising a list of 127 pharmacy-related goal indicators. This handbook list was used as input for the Delphi method. Afterward, an expert group of international uh, pharmacists volunteered to participate or to contribute in an anonymous two-round Delphi method, and they were asked to assign the relevancy of indicators listed in the GPO indicators handbook and the published fifth development goals mechanism against each of the development goals. The expert group was also asked to provide further uh, review and feedback on the output of the first round. Eventually, after amending and incorporating all expert group comments and reviews, an initial consensus was met, and the 21 proposed list of 165 of uh, invalidated indicators were developed aligned to the 21 development goals. Uh, moving on to the descriptive uh, data analysis for stage two, uh, and the next slide, uh, which is the online questionnaire. Uh, or the uh, online global engagement stage, uh, a total of 755 participants responded to the 21 online questionnaire from different practice areas and the six WHO regions. Uh, as we can see here on the map, that the Western Pacific and the European regions were the res uh, regions with the highest response rate, with 31% and 23% uh, respectively. And the responses from the other four regions were nearly evenly distributed, ranging from 10 to 12% to of the total response rates, total response rates uh, each. Uh, moving on to the next slide, this is a bit a heavy slide and it's showing the statistical analysis performed for the same stage. Uh, so based on the two questions listed in the online questionnaire about describing the relevancy and the availability of the proposed indicators, Two selection criteria were set to determine if an, to determine if an indicator is a globally valid and measurable of uh, measurable indicators. So, as we can see here on the slide, the first criterion is the relevancy of the proposed indicators to measure progress for each relevant DG from a global perspective. And the second criterion is the availability or the accessibility of these proposed indicators in different countries. So the analysis of uh, the questionnaire responses was performed using two statistical approach. Uh, this figure here shows the first approach, which is the outliers detection using the, the box plot examination to identify the not relevant indicators. And the analysis resulted in the exclusion of 10 indicators from the initially proposed list, I mean, from the 165 uh, indicators. If we move to the next figure, uh, this figure, uh, shows uh, or demonstrate the, the second approach, which was done by setting or establishing three evidence-based thresholds to indicate, to indicate the level of performance or the level of uh, usability of these indicators. So as illustrated here in the diagram, 
for example, if the availability of an indicator is above or equal uh, 60%, it's classified as a usable indicator. If the availability is between uh, 40 to 50, 59%, it's classified as a problematic indicator. And if the availability is below 40%, it's classified as a not usable or rejected indicator. Uh, for the analysis purpose, only the relevant indicators which passed the first criteria were used and compared with the counter responses to ensure the indicators availability and accessibility in order to meet the second criteria. And the analysis of this, of this stage generated 109 uh, usable indicators or ex approved indicators ready to be tested after meeting both criteria also produced 40%, uh, 40 problematic indicators to be reviewed later and finally 16 indicators that were rejected. Uh, if we move to the final slide, uh, I will point out here the resulting key outcomes. So first, the main outcome is a set of correlated and validated transnational evidence-based indicators that will monitor development goals progress worldwide and support countries uh, in the process of their pharmacy advancement and transformation. Second, the final list of development goals indicators was also presented in the, in the 21 development goals and across the three uh, development goals event, uh, elements, I mean, workforce education, practice, and science uh, with one indicator under each development goal at least. Uh, if we move uh, the, yeah, thank you, Chris. It's also worth, worth mentioning that uh, some DGs, particularly the ones we can see here on the slide, uh, I mean, the DG 11 impact and outcome, uh, DG 12 pharmacy intelligence and DG 20 digital health, health have only one or two indicators under the final approved or usable list of indicators. However, the questionnaire analysis showed that the analysis, uh, the initial, uh, sorry, that the initially proposed indicators of these goals were relevant to the context of these DG or these uh, development goals. I mean, they met the first uh, criteria of a measurable global indicators in terms of the relevancy, but didn't meet the second criteria. I mean, the availability and accessibility assessment in the respondent countries. But I think we can say that although data and intelligence, uh, intelligence the focus areas of these three DGs are considered uh, new emerging areas and show rapid growth in the healthcare field, the existence of national strategies and systems of implementation is still relatively limited, and then a lack of measures to monitor services impact and health outcomes is expected. Uh, now, finally, uh, the developed list of indicators was also clustered into five, categor five categories to present the development or the developed G indicators as a second dimension. So we have, for example, Capacity type indicators, which uh, or where data is express, expressed as numbers, like the number of pharmacies, pharmacies, etc. We also have impact type indicators uh, to measure the impact and health outcomes of the pharmaceutical services provided. We also have uh, pharmaceutical services and facilities type indicators, which focus on the availability uh, of the pharmaceutical services, the facilities, and the infrastructures needed. We also have policies and regulatory systems type indicators, which focus on the regulations and the strategies as drivers to shape the structure of the needed system to improve the healthcare outcomes. Finally, we have training and professional development indicators, which focus on developing competencies and skills across all sectors and career stages. Uh, this was a short overview of how the global FIP development goals indicators were developed as evidence-driven global developmental work using research methods to support tracking progress toward the uh, FIP development goals. Thank you all for your listening, and how I will hand it over back to my colleague, uh, Shirley. She will take you through the project next step. The floor is yours, Shirley. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diala, for the informative information about uh, the development of the indicators. So as we heard from Diala, this globally validated list of indicators across all development goals will monitor progress worldwide and support the country in the process of transformation of their workforce, education, practice, and pharmaceutical sciences. So what would be our next step? To support the implementation of the indicators, we are currently developing a tool for selecting indicators and a monitoring and evaluation framework. The DG Indicator Framework will enable the design of global Atlas dashboard 
which will drive and inform the progress towards the development goals. So if we go to the next slide, you will see the aims and objective of a DG's uh, indicator framework. The aim is to support tracking progress of pharmacy practice, workforce-less education, and science elements of the development goals at a national or member organization level. We have three specific objectives of this uh, framework. The first is to support our member organization to track and monitor progress towards the development goals. And secondly, it is to align, our, uh, align the DG mon monitoring with existing member organization or national monitoring frameworks in order to synergize globally comparable progress, monitoring and improvement efforts, and also to address data gaps and minimize uh, reporting burdens. And finally, it is to enable global tracking of the progress of member organizations and stakeholders towards the development goals through the provision and alignment of a global set of indicators that can assist in multinational review of aggregated data. So following the aims and objective, in the next slide, you will see the intended benefit of the framework. We hope that in general, the DG indicator framework will synergize global, regional, and national monitoring effort and will provide the following benefits. So um, a framework of indicators that member organizations or nations can tailor to their specific context to monitor progress against the development goals. So that is why we are here as well. We will hear a letter uh, from the panelists about um, the specific context. So it is also to reduce variability across nations monitoring by providing a standardized monitoring frameworks mapped to the development goals. And lastly, it is to provide guidance on areas that is not traditionally measured by member organizations or nations. In the next slide, you will see our proposed process for tracking the development goals. So first, we need to select the development goals to be tracked. In order to select the priority DGs, we can identify general broad areas where there are active ongoing national policies or projects mapped to the FIP development goals. We can also then identify, for example, the top five priorities mapped to the FIP development goals. And after selecting the priority DG, we need to select the right indicators. We need to uh, make sure that uh, we, we need to think about that indicators could be useful to provide measurable results to demonstrate progress towards development goals. Um, it will it will indicator will be useful to identify areas that need attention or opportunities for improvement, and indicator are useful to support the continuous improvement. And thirdly, uh, we then develop a monitoring and evaluation framework. In this slide, you will see the difference between um, monitoring and evaluation. And we can consider specific questions that are needed to answer to assess or track progress um, with their DGs. For example, what is being monitored? Then we can make links uh, to the data sources and how this will be reported. And finally, we need to have a continuous improvement. And Atlas dashboard can be useful um, for the presentation of this data and to look at the change over time to inform to inform and drive the improvement. Um, and this will have a significant potential to support the regular reviews of DG's progress and also to improve the data quality. So that's in general our proposed process to monitor, evaluate, and continuous improving in order to advance our profession worldwide. So thank you all for listening, and I will give the floor back now to Bob. Thank you. Well, thank you both for the wonderful presentations. Again, if you have any questions for our speakers, please add them to the question and answer uh, button at the bottom of your Zoom. And uh, next we're going to move into our panel discussion and we have two outstanding panelists from the region. Uh, our first panelist, if I might have the next slide, okay, is Dr. Nadia L. Mazrue. She's a member of the FIP Data and Intelligence Commission that I had talked about before, representing the Eastern Mediterranean Pharmaceutical Forum. She's an assistant professor in pharmacy practice, and she's an academic and a healthcare consultant. So brings uh, tremendous skills and talents to this. Uh, I also want to mention that the panelist uh, uh, bios in more detail are provided with the chat. So please do take a look. Our second presenter is Dr. Bana. 
uh, Mukhala Latte, and she brings, uh, again, tremendous experience to this discussion. She's an FIP Global Lead for Development Goal 3, Quality Assurance. She's an assistant professor in clinical pharmacy and pharmacy practice. And she has a research focus looking at the learning theories, teaching, curricular instruction and assessment, approaches, capacity building, and pharmacy education. So I'm sure we're going to have a tremendous uh, panel discussion today. So, and audience, don't hesitate to ask some questions. Okay. So I think maybe the best way to start, if you don't mind, and what we'll do is we'll start with Nadia and then move to Bana. Uh, we'll start with a question, if I might. Do the regional development goal priorities described earlier in Dr. Lena Bader's session resonate with your national needs? Do they resonate with your national needs? Uh, Nadia first. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Thank you, uh, Robert, for this uh, introduction. And um, uh, actually, uh, thank you also for uh, Dr. Alina, also better, because she was with us in, uh, uh, in, uh, in all these set of meetings. We were together, and uh, she did a great job. Really, it is. Um, we started by uh, identifying our uh, needs. Uh, and uh, ac uh, according to our national needs of different countries, we try to also to do it in uh, qualitative analysis. Then we, we try to um, uh, recognize what's the most important uh, need, um, uh, events we want to do it in cooperation with the development goal of the FIP. Then after that, we did a map, a map for our uh, all the regions. And uh, we find that it's covering, uh, there is a variation uh, in, uh, from country to country to their re needs in the Eastern Mediterranean region. And we try to uh, link our activity and events to the development goals of the, uh, B, uh, which is set by the FIB. So we are working as one FIB together, uh, the forums, the, uh, on, on, national uh, on national level and also on regional level, plus we are trying to link with international or global uh, advancement and um, uh, transforming of pharmacy practice. Um, actually, we find, um, uh, we did, I will, I will tell you about one success story with us that uh, she was led by the FIB and we did a several, uh, several uh, meetings and several events. Uh, for vaccination for pharmacy to be involved in the vaccination programs, which is one of the also FIB development goal and improving pr practice and also uh, on um, uh, trying to uh, continue professional development strategy, which is, which is go uh, goal number nine. And for also 19, patient safety. So in this way, we did really, we work together because of the COVID incidents is coming uh, and it was in our region mainly we don't have any involvement of pharmacists in the vaccination program so by conducting several events with also lena she was with us in our group dr lena and we were working together and we try to make more uh, co commitment and more uh, uh, creating more events more participation from different countries in our region so we develop together that uh, we uh, several sets of FIB digital events, and we were involved, and many many uh, uh, countries from our region involved. So we found that uh, actually it is a great success in our region that they approved the involvement of pharmacists in the vaccination program in the community pharmacy and in in the setting. So this is a great success done or led by the FIB also and with also uh, EMAR forum and with the different uh, leads, uh, they help us a lot in this. This is one of the, of the success. The second success also we find that um, we started with uh, Jordan uh, to making uh, support for their uh, working force development. And we try to make a module, everything, and then we try to share it and integrate it with other countries and we are in the process of that. But I found that sharing data uh, and uh, analyzing the data from different countries will help others and will, will cause integration 
in in the in the for in the services and in the in the uh, improvement and transformation advancing of pharmacy practice regionally first we're starting nationally regionally and then we reach globally thank you fantastic nadia thank you so much if i might ask uh, Benna, the same thing do the regional development goal priorities described earlier in dr lena bader's session resonate with your national needs uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the FIP for giving the opportunity for me to be in this uh, important webinar. Um, also, I would like to commend uh, the great uh, effort uh, by the FIB in uh, collecting the data about uh, different um, regional uh, priorities, as well as uh, the great effort, uh, research effort uh, uh, mentioned by uh, Diala and um, Shirley uh, in developing the indicators. Uh, this is really a great um, research approach. Uh, with a great outcome. Uh, now, regarding the priorities mentioned by Dixer Lina uh, in the region, uh, I agree that this is, and I speak here um, about uh, Qatar as uh, a country, and I uh, focus more in the workforce um, uh, education uh, goals more than the science and the practice uh, goals, because this is where I come from, being an academic uh, academician in, uh, in Qatar University. So this is my focus. Uh, in Qatar, we don't have a national organization so uh, what I'm, I'm going to mention is based on uh, my uh, personal observation uh, and knowledge. Uh, so uh, I think that we have a gap uh, in Qatar uh, related to goal number two, uh, which is about the training uh, pathway uh, for uh, newly graduating pharmacists. Uh, and this is something that um, I know that at the level of the country is uh, paying attention to by uh, developing a committee that looks at different uh, frameworks and structures available uh, globally so that we can adapt and adopt uh, what is relevant and suitable for us. And this aligns also with the competency framework. So we don't have a clear pathway for neither uh, newly graduating pharmacists or even uh, more advancing pharmacists in their career uh, so that they, they become, for example, a specialist or consultant or that. But I know that there is an effort and there is a committee that started um, a few years ago uh, to develop uh, such frameworks. So we are on it. And um, you know, we also try to connect uh, between the FIP and between these uh, committees so that they, we can learn from the FIP experience uh, in developing uh, these frameworks. Uh, uh, what we have done uh, well so far, I think, in terms of uh, the development goal is the quality assurance uh, and the capacity building. Uh, so goal number one and three, I think that in Qatar, we are really doing well in these two uh, goals. Uh, we are working well with uh, uh, the practice sector in order to ensure that there is uh, that we are talking together in terms of preparing our uh, graduates uh, for the practice in terms of numbers and in terms of. Uh, uh, preparation and uh, uh, expected uh, competencies uh, and also in terms of the quality assurance uh, in the College of Pharmacy at Qatar University we have accreditation uh, by the CCAP uh, which is a Canadian accrediting uh, organization, uh, which is really keeping us uh, on track in terms of the global needs for quality assurance, which is also aligning with our national agenda. Fantastic. Thank you so much. What I'd like to do is explore this a little bit further. And uh, if we might, if you would, and we'll start with Banna first and then uh, uh, Nadia this time. But if you would think about, again, as you've talked about your top priorities, if you would take maybe your very top priority, and if you would tell us a little bit about what data and intelligence is needed to track the progress of that priority, 
and what gaps you have seen that we need to think about further. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I think that uh, the top priority is to find um, a practice uh, uh, framework uh, for practitioners, whether they are in their early uh, career or whether they are in advanced career. So finding um, a framework or a competency pathway that they uh, can go through and how to achieve uh, different levels, the same like it is for other professions, uh, very well defined. So I think this is the top priority that we have now. And I think in order to collect uh, or to 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 um, uh, to be in uh, on top of this priority, we need to collect data about the number of pharmacists uh, that we have uh, in the country and uh, in different sectors and uh, to see uh, how they are progressing into their careers. Uh, do we uh, conduct, for example, professional development uh, session for them? Do we have a uh, uh, certifying system? Uh, do they need to, for example, have certain number of uh, continuing education hours in order to uh, recertify them or relicense uh, them? And uh, is this just general? General, they can go to any session to attend whatever is the session or is this really specialized. So we need to see what is available now uh, in terms of uh, what is the system and uh, to see what is available nationwide, uh, regional wide in order to uh, develop uh, this competency framework. I know that uh, in our neighboring countries uh, such as uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, there is a system and there is a framework that exists and maybe it is adapted also from the uh, FIP or they worked with the FIP uh, toward uh, this end. Uh, so we can learn from this system. I think one of the gaps that we have in order to achieve this goal or this priority is that we don't have a member organization. So there is no um, uh, really one, uh, uh, yeah, any to go to a person or entity uh, that can look at uh, yeah, the pharmacist uh, nationwide. And this is uh, a big gap uh, here in the, in the state of Qatar. Uh, but uh, the committee that was formed a few years ago, as I mentioned, uh, is trying to uh, fill into, the gap, into this gap. And it's working across uh, different professions, not only the pharmacy profession, and that's why maybe it's moving a little bit. Um, uh, it's not focusing on the pharmacy only, which is uh, affecting uh, the progress because it wants to look at the health care professions uh, generally, not only focusing in one uh, profession, which is also a strength uh, to this committee. Thank you so very much, Banna. Those, I think, are important comments for us to really think about. Nadi, if I might ask the same thing, uh, uh, what really uh, is the data and intelligence needed to track progress against whatever your top priority is? And what do you see are the gaps? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, I agree with uh, Dr. Benan also her, her uh, points, which uh, regarding uh, uh, her uh, region or her country, but also we have other different countries that are suffering from the same. It is, it is general. We have some countries which is really, it is uh, developed and they have their uh, framework for, uh, for the future of pharmacy. And uh, they have a, a connection together and they know they are uh, estimating and they are evaluating. Um, uh, they, they try to develop the, the profession in, their, in their, uh, their countries. And there is others where they don't have organization or there are few only they are working in individual work. So we are from the MR forum, we're trying to join with everyone and trying to help. If I want to go, come to your uh, question, which is very important, that we need really a, a, a real data and we need a, um, um, a, a true data, which is really expressed what's happening in, in the region, in the Eastern Mediterranean region. We have variation, in that, but this is will be a very good thing. Also, uh, we have, um, as we say, there is the three pillars, which is the science, the education, and the workforce. We have to connect between them. We there is a gap between 
the education, the academic in the region, in the MR region, from the academic to the science and uh, actually to support the workforce. It is supposed to be the education developing to create a competence pharmacist to be working in the, in the, in the region. So actually there is a variation. So it needs, as she said, we need more accreditation for the educational levels and towards um, providing the, the real uh, pharmacists. So from the Data uh, uh, Intelligence Commission, we can share in these things, which is, I think, Metina project was done also, but a few countries share in that one. That's what we need. We, we want to know to make it in, uh, in more level and to encourage more people to be involved in it. So actually we can uh, validate this data and we can depend on it. This is the first things we can support. Also the development goals, we are working, we are better than, if you, if you assess us now, we are better than uh, before, we are improving, it means before three, four years. And there is impact on that one. We're trying also to, to, um, to uh, uh, develop more. And this is because we are in development uh, process. Uh, the, the competency of the pharmacist in, in, in the work place, this is the most important things. We want to encourage them more. We want to let them uh, continuous education make for them and certifications. As she said also, Dr. Benan, that we need really a framework uh, as, as a standard, standardized for, for the uh, uh, global to be applied in the in the region. But the FIB, it can play a big role in, in that one. And also um, uh, unifying or standardization of the education also. Uh, uh, curriculums, everything. Now you will find there is variation. Some they will give PharmD and some uh, even their PharmD is not really accredited. And some, the, 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 they have bachelor, um, the PharmD is sometimes it is a master program and sometimes it is under, uh, certif يعني, it is a normal certification, uh, it is low, يعني, not, not as master. But this is variation, it should be unified. So the person, when he is going to, from a, co a course, he will go to, the, to, the, to work, he should be capable of, of doing and a transformation in the pharmacy profession, and he's capable to uh, continue the professional uh, career for him. Fantastic. I hope the audience enjoyed the discussion. I would really like to thank both of our expert panelists because the comments and their thoughts are really important for us as we all think about how to move forward. And uh, there's so many opportunities for pharmacy practice, uh, pharmacy science, and uh, we just need to take advantage of that. So fantastic. I think what I'll do now is uh, thank the audience because I'll turn it over to my colleague, Chris, to sort of summarize and, and close up the meeting. Chris? Thanks, thank Bob. You uh, thanks, Dr. Banan and Dr. Nadia, so much for your insights and talking about the priorities in the Eastern Mediterranean region. I'm just going to briefly wrap up and provide some conclusions for today's event. You've heard the, about the work of the Global Pharmaceutical Observatory and also of the important work of the FIP Data Intelligence Commission. We've then heard from Dr. Lina about the development goals and the priorities that are, have been identified globally, regionally, at um, in the Eastern Mediterranean and also nationally. And then we've heard from Shirley, uh, Dr. Shirley and Diala around the development of the development goal indicators, the research that has been undertaken and that we'll be shortly uh, sharing a development goal indicator, development goals indicator framework, uh, which has all 109 development goals in it. Of course, we haven't been had the time today to go through each of those development goal indicators because there's 109, but um, you'll see those very shortly. And you've heard some examples of how uh, indicators can be used. Uh, a common one we've used in the past is numbers of pharmacists per 10,000 population is a good uh, indicator of workforce capacity. Finally, we have the insights and expertise of our panelists um, and where they see the priorities are in 
the development goals in Eastern Mediterranean and what data is needed and where the gaps are, which was actually very important information going forward. So uh, if you'd like to know more about the Global Pharmaceutical Observatory, please do visit our microsite. We have the address is on the screen right now. Uh, check out all our future FIP digital events at events.fap.org. I'd like to thank all of our speakers and panelists today for their excellent presentations and work that is underway relating to the development goals and the development goal indicators. I'd like to particularly thank uh, Dr. Robert Sindlar Bob for joining us today and for being my excellent co-moderator. And finally, thank you all so much for attending and I wish you a good day. Take care and thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you very thank you. much.